Hello everyone, a warm welcome to this channel. Uh, please subscribe, like, share and comment on the video lectures. So today we will continue our discussion uh, with the second method. Previously, we have seen two iterative methods, which are bracket methods, the bisection and the regular finance method. Bracket methods need two initial approximations to find the successive approximations. Also, they also apply the intermediate value theorem in each iteration. So today, second method, which is another uh, iterative technique, uh, which is similar to the regular fallacy method, uh, but it drops the conditions that uh, f of x should have opposite signs at two points to find the next approximation, which means that uh, uh, we know that the regular fallacy method applies the intermediate value theorem in each iteration, so which means the same to that one. Yeah, this this part is the same to that one. It does not so the second method does not apply the intermediate value theorem in each iteration. Instead, it always um, uses the last two approximations for our points to 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 to, to, to obtain the next uh, approximation. So if we have x n minus one and x n. Um, uh, are, are two initial approximations, then we can find the next approximation x n plus one as using this uh, um, uh, using this general formula, which is uh, given by x n plus one is equal to x n minus x n minus x n minus one over f of x n minus f of x n minus one times f of x n, where n start from one to up to um, infinity, where uh, we know that we stop at some point by looking the function, the absolute value, the functional value, or the two successive iterations, the difference between the two successive iterations. So geometrically, uh, the second method looks uh, like a regular fallacy method, which means that uh, it uh, it connects the two points, the two functional values of the two points, with a straight line, and the point where the straight line cuts the x-axis will be taken as the uh, approximate value, the approximate, the next approximate value of the uh, to the root of the uh, nonlinear equation. So connecting these two points, then we obtain we obtain this one. Then then the non-functional value of this point becomes here. Then connecting this one and lifting x this this part to lifting this part and using x one x one and x two. Then connect this one. So that we get a second line, but this second line does not cut the x-axis. So in to, 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 to cut that one, we extend the line. You can see from the red line, uh, you get a point where it uh, we, we get a point where the next approximation is found. So this point is the next approximation. Then what would be the, its functional value? Then using that functional value and lifting this one, uh, lifting this one and using this one and this is the, the new the new approximate value, then we connect by a green line, the green, the green dotted line you can see, then we get another approximation, another uh, approximation, another approximation to the root. So you can calculate this that we are approaching to the exact root, we are approaching to the exact root. So the um, second method, uh, a second method applies similar to the regular fallacy method, which means that it connects the two points but uh, and, and and the point where the, the line cuts the x-axis will be taken as the next approximation. But in a regular fallacy method, uh, we always check the, the, the we always check whether the interval satisfies the intermediate value theorem or not. Instead, in a in, in, in second method, we always use the last two points to find the next approximation. Um, and uh, let's see with an example. The real root of the equation f of x is equal to x cubed minus five of x plus one, which is equal to lies in the interval zero between zero and one. So even though it's not given, even though it's not given, um, it, it, it's given, we can find the interval where the root lies by applying the intermediate value theorem. And you can see that the function is a cubic function. So it has three roots, it has three roots. And uh, we have said that I treat methods determine one root at a time. So that uh, for simplicity, uh, the, the question gives um, the interval with the root lies. So let's find 
what uh, let's find the root uh, in between n zero and one using second method. So the uh, f of x naught is one and f of x one is minus three. Clearly, you can see that uh, they are opposite, so that there exists a root in between one uh, zero and one. So the first approximation will be x2 is equal to x1 minus x1 minus x0 over f of x1 minus f of x0 times f of x1, which is which is substituting those values, we get uh, x1 is equal to 0 0.2. And it's functional value x2, which is equal to 0 point, negative 0 0.23437. And uh, we don't need the, 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 the sign of f of x2 instead we need its value to compute the next iteration. So to compute the next iteration, we, we, left, we left x1 out and use x1 and x2 to compute x3. So x3, which is equal to x2 minus x2 minus x1 over f of x2 minus f of x1 times f of x2. And substitute those values, we obtain x2, x3 will be 0 0.186441. And its functional value is f of x3, which is equal to 0.074276. So uh, to find the next approximation, we use x2 and x3, and we left x1. We left x1, then x4 is equal to x3 minus x3 minus x2 over f of x3 minus f of x2 times f of x3. So substituting the values, we obtained the x, 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 x4 is equal to 0 0.201736, and f of x4 is negative. 0 0.000070, negative 0 0.000470. So you can see from the functional values that absolutely absolute value with its functional value, the x, x4 is nearly, nearly, nearly zero, which means that we are approaching to the root of the uh, nonlinear equation, to the root of the nonlinear equation. So using x3 and x4 and left and x2, we obtain x5, which is uh, x5 is equal to x4 minus x4 minus x3 over f of x4 minus f of x3 times f of x4. Then we obtain that uh, x5, um, which is equal to 0 0.201640. Uh, so you can see that the, 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 four, the x4 is 0 0.201736 and here 0 0.2016. So we can say that the approximate root value of the root is uh, is 0 0.20164 correct to five decimal places. So, so even the functional value f of x4 is telling us, telling us that we are approaching to the root of the approximate root of the nonlinear equation. Let's see with another example. Find the root of uh, the equation uh, f of x4 is equal to f of x is equal to four times sine x plus x squared by second method. So uh, we have said that uh, we cannot, we, we do not apply the intermediate value theorem uh, in, in second method. So we neglect this part, we neglect this part. So taking the initial approximation, x naught is equal to minus one, and x one is equal to two. If of x naught is negative 2.36588, and if of x one is equal to 0 0.36281. So you can clearly, the, the, the functional values are opposite, so that there is a root between minus one and two. So using second method, we can find the first approximation x2, which is equal to x1 minus x1 minus x0 over f of x1 minus f of x0 times f of x1, which gives, uh, which gives negative 1.86704. And its functional value is, its functional value is negative 0 0.33992. So, but we don't need the sign of the functional value for the new, the new approximation. But it's we need its value. It's we need its value instead of its sign because second method do not apply the intermediate value theorem at each iteration. Instead, it uses the last two points to approximate the next iteration, so that we we left x naught and use x one and x two to compute x three. So x three, which is equal to x two minus x two minus x one over f of x two minus f of f of x one times f of x two, and it gives. Uh, substituting the values, it gives that uh, negative 1.93135 is uh, the next approximation. And its functional value is negative 0 0.01269. So by lifting x2, or by lifting x1, we uh, using x3 and x2, we can compute x4. So x4 is equal to x3 minus x3 minus x2 over f of x3 minus f of x2 times f of x3 
uh, so substituting the values of uh, this, those, we obtain that uh, x4 uh, is equal to negative uh, 1.93384 and its functional value is uh, f of x4 functional value is is, is negative which is 0 0.00045 yeah and, and we, you can you can see that you can see that uh, we are approaching to zero because uh, it's it's approaching to zero we are we are it's, it's significantly small number so that we are approaching to the root it, it tells us we are approaching to the root so the next approximation x5 is obtained by using x4 and x3 by lifting x2 so x5 is equal to x4 minus x4 minus x3 over f of x4 minus f of x3 times f of x4 so substituting those values we obtain that uh, x5 is equal to negative 1.93375 and you can see that uh, by looking at the two successive approximations x so the third and the fourth approximation you can see that they are nearly the same up to four decimal places. When we are approximating to four decimal places, they are nearly the same and the difference is zero. So that the approximate root or to the approximate value to the root of the uh, nonlinear equation is uh, negative 1.9338 is um, the root to, 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 to be correct to four decimal places. Now, um, this is the algorithm of second method, the algorithm for a second method. So we will start with uh, initial approximations or inputs. So xn minus one, xn, f of xn minus one and f of xn with a tolerance or the error difference or we can say the rate, the degree of accuracy. The degree of accuracy it may be four decimal place or it may be three decimal place or it may be five decimal place. So then we compute using this initial approximation, we compute the successive approximations using the general formula, xn plus one is equal to xn minus, um, xn minus xn minus one, f of x over, f of xn minus f of xn minus one times f of xn. Now we complete successive approximations and we reach at some point where uh, the absolute value of xn minus xn minus one greater than three is that if it, this is greater than three, if it is yes, then we leave x uh, we, li we leave xn minus one and complete xn minus two by using xn plus two by using xn plus one and xn by using xn plus one and xn. If this one is, uh, if it is one is not satisfied, which means that uh, the absolute value of x n minus x n minus one is less than epsilon, the desired degree of accuracy, if this is uh, less than the desired degree of accuracy, then the output will be x n, the output will be x n uh, plus one, and we stop at that point. So this is uh, the algorithm for fixing for force for second method.